And negative. She's just saying it's multiple subjects wearing all black. <laughs> he does not believe her. So this is the body cam footage from the Samantha Wolford case. She's the woman that was a wannabe YouTuber. Samantha had this brilliant idea to become a victim, and she decided to have her sweet, innocent, wonderful boyfriend murdered. He's the sweetest looking kid ever. His name is Eddie Ibarra. She had him murdered by three of her friends, and then she tried to set it up as a victim. So a lot of you guys have seen Jennifer Pan. She was the person that similarly hired three guys to kill her parents and then, you know, tied herself upstairs and tried to act like a victim. Samantha Wolford did the same exact thing. So imagine that if we had the body cam footage of when they pulled up at Jennifer Pan's house. So Samantha did it and she was convicted. She's lying, but let's watch her lie. After Eddie was kidnapped, supposedly, and murdered, Samantha Wolford called her mother to say that people had broken in and she was tied up. Samantha Wolford's mother arrives there and she calls police, right? So this is the police for the first time interacting with Samantha after she claims she's been tied up. Where's she at? She's upstairs. Okay, bye. Where's she at? She's coming. She was, she was talking to dispatch. Yeah. So this is the mother and then here's Samantha's ass right now and she about to lie look y'all can just see a little bit of her arm oh samantha ready to lie so this is the first instance of lying and manipulation that i'm about to point out right now when something horrible happens to you and an officer arrives anyone's first inclination is to scream cry out start to say what happened you know anything like that and instead right now the officer's just standing here he, he could be he's i doubt he's writing anything because there's nothing to write down He's just standing here, pretty much looking right at Samantha. And instead of speaking first, she's waiting for the officer to say something so she can respond to it because she doesn't want to say the wrong thing. We saw this before when we watched this Paul Bernando interview. They wait for you to say as much as possible so they know what you know and they can figure things out and they only respond to that. So instead of her talking, she's just f***ing sitting here doing, like, I don't know, getting ready to lie. Uh, so... So walk me through what happened. I don't honestly know what happened. Okay. I was in bed asleep. Get out of here. Okay. And we heard a noise. And the second I was able to open my eyes, somebody grabbed me and jerked me out of the bed and slammed me down on the ground and started tying me up. Okay. And put a knife to my face. Oh, told me don't move. Okay. Now I'm being clear. I'm being arrested. Over and over and over. And just keep fighting back. And I was just letting him do it. And what's your husband's name? Ernest Ibera. Ernest Ibera. Okay. Did she get an Oscar for this? Yes, she did. A scale of one to ten. There's so much coming up. Scale of one to ten. <laughs> how how bad of a liar is she so far? Like I I feel like this stuff. Honestly, before JCS came out, this stuff was kind of hard to spot. But now. It's just so blatantly obvious. Like, I honestly feel like by watching these types of interrogations and like JCS and stuff, if somebody did this to me in real life, I would be real suspicious. Very suspicious. I would, this is a, this is an eight for me. You know, this is an eight. Has anything about. They had black masks on, black shirts, black pants. Every inch of skin was covered. Like, uh, gloves. Mm -hmm. I couldn't there, see anything. One of them did say the name Luke, but that's it. That was Luke. all. That's only it, Luke? identifying anything of a god. Luke? Luke? If there's three of. Okay, listen. Here's the sh if there's three of us and we're robbing a house, okay? And we, we all into the nines, all black, gloves, mask, everything, every inch of skin covered. And you say my name, Luke? I'm a pistol whip you real fuck fast. This is just, if it was a scenario, okay? So that's just like her way of trying to throw off authorities. On top of that, another thing, I always call this out and let's listen for this. I don't know for sure if it's gonna happen, but generally when someone is involved in the murder and they're talking to the police about that person, they try to find ways to throw that person under the bus. So they might say, oh, he was an alcoholic. Oh, he was really into gambling. Oh, he had some drug debts. So there's a chance Samantha might do that. But normally when somebody is worried about somebody or it misses the victim, they're not trying to discredit their lifestyle after they've passed away. One of them said, hey, Luke. And the guy turned, but that's the only identifying anything I've got. 
Well, I told me to, Kenny. I went downstairs and his face was covered in blood. And he had cuts on top of his head. Do you know what they were hitting him with? A gun. Okay, do you remember what kind of, what the gun looked like? It was just a hand pistol. I didn't focus on the gun. It was focused on him. Okay, you remember what colors, anything like that? It's a black gun. Okay. All right, um, and y'all are upstairs. Asleep. Okay. Are you doing okay? Do you do you need medical attention or anything? Do you just slap me in the face if it's not a bruise, guys? I mean. Yeah. Okay. You got some redness on your face. He said, "Look at her," and he wouldn't look up at how's, me. How's he, the babies? They're all in bed asleep. They never mess with the kids. Okay. And then he asked, him, "How are my kids? Where are my kids?" He said, he put, "Did she just disappear?" Um, another thing too, it's a question for you guys. You're an officer that arrives on the scene. You have a married couple and one of them has been abducted, but it's the man. That, it, sometimes that's a little different. So if the man is abducted, usually he's wealthy. Maybe this is a hit. Maybe they're, um, you know, if, if somebody's coming in and you owe them money for drugs, for the most part, I'm going to be honest, they're just going to kill you. Like, they're not going to go through the effort of kidnapping the guy and then taking him somewhere else to kill them. It does not make sense. It's too much effort for this murder, especially when, like, they're going to look at, like, Eddie and who he's involved with and who he knew. He was just a normal guy. He was just a normal guy that liked to play video games. This does not make sense. I punched him in the mouth with the gun and said, I ain't here for no kids, motherfucker. And I, I think love her impressions of him. Oh my god. Okay. And they jerked his hair up and said, Look at her. Look at her. And I had my head pulled back. And he looked at me and he said, That's the last time you're going to see her. And this is like a movie, huh? Samantha? Do you want us to kill her too? Hey, he is there somebody no. that can go with Coop? Yeah, is there I never somebody? saw a vehicle. I never saw. I don't know what type of vehicle they're in. Yeah. How many people are there? He's here Three, with me. maybe four. Maybe four. Okay. If, yeah, if he'll go up that way with Cooper, yeah, just in case. I, like I said, I couldn't tell anything about him. I know there was a lot of them here. Three, maybe four. I could be wrong. There might have been more in the vehicle. Yeah. Did you hear any, I heard, any shots or anything like that? When well, I was we heard some commotion food. outside. Okay. And I know they were doing something in my house because I could hear shit breaking, but... Uh -huh. Okay, let's walk up here. Where you? Where you? Uh... Samantha, do you want me to get your children and take them? You can't stay here. You can't stay. Oh. Well, hold on, I hold on, hold on. Wait, what? You're kidding me. She, she didn't think that through. The first thing she should have been sitting here screaming is, "I can't stay here. I can't stay here. I can't stay here." That would be a lot more convincing. She's planning on staying at this house with her children after her mother and the officers leave. You have to, you have to like fill out a whole bunch of stuff to get it, but yeah. How how did she find out that you were? Uh... Because they did, they took his phone. Thinking about the lie. They didn't take mine. I had mine hidden. Uh huh. So I was able to. So he's got his phone. No, they have his. Phone. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. What's his phone number? I don't know. You don't know. Oh, she didn't expect that, huh? They took his phone, but okay, then let's let's call the number. And then she goes, I don't know. No, uh, Four, three, zero, do you got it stored in your phone? Yes. Okay, it's look that. Number. Look. My aunt has my phone. Huh? Well, I, I need that number. Get that number from her. <coughs> oh, they changed the light. Hello. Okay. Where where were y'all at when this happened? In there. Okay. Also, normal. this is the thing too, guys. You can look around their apartment. These were not very high income people. So the thought that they left Samantha and the children and let her keep her cell phone, but they took Eddie and took his cell phone does not add up at all. <laughs> like, it just doesn't. And that was Samantha's story from the jump. Like, she literally planned this shit, and that was her story. As far as we knew. Yeah. But they they kept saying that you know why this is happening. Uh, your dad narked and took someone from us, so we're gonna take someone from him. And I don't know what they meant. They took someone from us. I don't know who us is. I don't I don't understand what's going on.
So there we go. She goes and injects a very strong motive. Your dad narked. Oh, chat. Your dad narked and took someone from us. So we're going to take someone from you. That's what her new motive is. Is that Eddie, Eddie Abara's dad narked on somebody and they got arrested. So now they're getting their revenge on Eddie. This doesn't make any sense man this just no did yeah I that had to have happened when that was not there before okay during okay. the whole commotion Put my watermark right yeah. here, okay here's another thing that samantha likes to do when she's pressed for more information that she hasn't thought of yet she goes nah. she puts on the voice like it's like okay i don't have an answer to that so let me just garner sympathy until i can figure it out she does it every single time <laughs> And negative. She's just saying it's multiple subjects wearing all black. <laughs> he, he does not believe her. It's the fact that I don't know his vehicle going to possibly cost uh, his life. Hey, look up, look up that, uh, look up that number for me, okay? She said, she said it's multiple subjects wearing all black. <laughs> hey, uh, so it's it's Ernie Ibera, the young one. Um, multiple subjects. Kicked in the front door, I guess, and uh, he said, "I guess." Come in the house, assaulted her and him. Uh, got drug him out of the house. I mean, I've got a hole in the wall where it looks like he got slammed into a wall or something, and some blood. Uh, and said that they were gonna go to his dad's house. So I've got uh. Cooper going to Dad's house right now. Me and Godoy are out here, yeah. <laughs> and um, I've got a Winfield unit going with Cooper over there. I, I know this is just officer talk, but I just I love those little inflections where we can tell that he doesn't believe her. You know. Um, also, turn the camera around. Let us see. Let us see. No, it's the only other one I got to go Walk back him up. Because they're supposed to have a, a pistol. They pistol whipped him. And said that they were gonna, gonna kill him. Said, said, uh, she's saying that Daddy narked on somebody, and now they're gonna, I guess, retaliate. They took, uh, he took somebody from them, so they're gonna take somebody from him, kind of thing. She doesn't know that she says they were wearing all black and. Uh, Black masks. I love how her lies are just like off to the side. And she said, So they sat there and they cut my clothes off of me and they made me stand there naked while they told me all the things that they were going to do to me. Okay, so I bet you. I bet you. I, I really do. Samantha didn't cut those clothes ahead of time. All they got to do now is say, where did that happen? And she's going to say, oh, it happened downstairs in the laundry room. And they're going to be like, okay, we're going to go down there and look for those cut clothes. Well, they're not there. So now what? And she's, see, with people like this, though, officers can kind of just let them keep ramping up their lies into stupider things that they just can't talk themselves out of. So they should really, oh, my God, if I were this officer, I'd be like, I'm so sorry. And then what did they do? This is horrible. We need to get these guys. What did they look like? <laughs> the guy said, I hey, uh, I'll call Baxter and have him go that way, man. I just, I had him just see if somebody could go with him. Get it quick, because I'm not this type of person. Okay. So I started rummaging through my closet. He said, I said, right. get it quick. I will uh, the call him real quick. So I just grabbed whatever shirt huh? and put it on. What, what's your name? Samantha. Samantha. Wolford. Where's that shirt at? Samantha Wolford. Where's the cut? Oh my god. He said, Where's that shirt at? And she said, Downstairs. Let's f***ing go, boys. But I will, uh, let me call back to real. Another f***ing line. She said, It's a gray sweater. Who the f*** sleeps in a sweater? Who sleeps in a hoodie? Who sleeps in a sweater? Nobody. Literally. Nobody. Real quick. And get him heading with Cooper. Boards, get out. No, you don't. 
All right, that's the first. That is the first footage. Remember, guys, this is raw body cam. <laughs> 